Well, hello and welcome back. We're going to talk today about willingness, as in our little willingness that we bring to the table on the spiritual path. And we're also going to talk about control, as in our need for control. So you may or may not think of yourself as a control freak in the sense of the word that we commonly use it. Right? You may or may not think of yourself as that. Maybe other people think you are a control freak. Maybe you think you are, and maybe you're not at all. But let's think a little bit deeper here about the ways that we attempt to control phenomena here in the world. We're invited and encouraged, each and every one of us, to strive in the world. We're encouraged to strive for sex, a hot, sexy mate, money, comfort, food, really good wine, really good wine, and all kinds of other things. We're invited and encouraged by <laughs> the corporate news media to buy their sponsors' products <laughs> worldwide. Worldwide, of course. We're invited to consume this, that, the other. We're invited to buy, buy, buy. And we're fed a message that that's life, that that's what it's all about, that getting more, better stuff, sexier stuff, shinier stuff here in the world is what life is all about. And the true measure of a successful life is someone who has a big fat bank account and a couple of yachts, one of which is moored conveniently in Saint-Tropez or someplace else that's really, really nice and swanky. We're fed the message that that is success, that that is what life is all about. So what do we then do as we're conditioned through no fault of our own in this way? We attempt to procure all that, and when we don't, we feel like absolute failures. We've all had this happen to us. And it is our conditioning, no matter where you grow up in the world, doesn't matter the society that you live in, people like our parents just want us to be comfortable. They don't necessarily want us to be happy, do they? They just want us to be comfortable and have the right partner in life and have a nice enough house and, and not have to want for anything. And okay, well, you know what? That's all well and good because they were conditioned by their parents to want the same thing and on and on and on. And here you are on the spiritual path with the opportunity to let all that go completely. And not only that, you want deep down to let all that go completely. If you didn't, you wouldn't be watching this. You wouldn't be interested in A Course in Miracles. A Course in Miracles is mind training. It is about letting go of all not just some, but all of our ego identification. It's about seeing everything completely differently than the way you were raised to see it, including yourself. It's radical and it's powerful, and yet here you are. So we attempt to control the external world in ways that we're not even aware of. You may not attempt to control other people's behavior, but you still want to climate control your entire life, so to speak. We want things to turn out a certain way, so we do things. We engage in certain activities to bring about a result in the world. And we believe that that result in the world, in the physical, phenomenal world, is going to bring us happiness. Yet we know deep down that true happiness is an inside job. It comes from doing this course. It comes from 
our spiritual practice, whatever that may look like for you. So we're invited here in paragraph three, chapter two of the text, part six, fear and conflict. We're just going to talk about one single paragraph today. <laughs> paragraph three, that's it. Seven sentences packed full of meaning. Remember, this course is holographic. Every single sentence contains the entire thought system. Every part contains the whole. And when you think about it, that's a lot of sentences. So this is profound, as we say, in the I am world and on Messenger. It's profound AF, isn't it? When you think about it that way. Big time. Big time. Hmm. Controlling the external world, manipulating and managing and attempting to control and dictate the outcome of things in the phenomenal world does not equal healing. When we attempt to orchestrate and control phenomena, we simply end up replacing one illusion with another. If we want to have a new car, and we engage in all kinds of activity to bring about the causes and conditions that deliver us that new car on a platter, well, the old car is an object it's an illusion. Why? Because it's a thing in the physical world. So we replace one with another. So does that make us happy? Is that healing? Well, first of all, replacing one car with another car doesn't really do anything for us at the level of the mind, does it? It's replacing one illusion with another. Not saying if you need a new car, don't get one. Yeah, do. Do get one. And if you have the ability to get that black, shiny, sexy Mercedes, then get it. Whatever, right? Get it. No one's saying don't get it. What we're doing here on this series of videos is we're explaining, because we need to hear it again and again, that arranging things in the phenomenal world, manifesting things in the phenomenal world does not lead to permanent happiness. You're simply exchanging one illusion for another. If that's what you choose to do, this is perfectly fine. It's your choice. It is. It's each of our choice. We have a choice right now in the present moment. But let's not confuse being a control freak and orchestrating and manipulating phenomena in the physical world with healing. It's not healing. Healing is done at the level of the mind. That's where it's needed. It's not needed in the illusory world. Remember, this is A Course in Miracles, central teaching of which is, say it with me, there is no world. Now, Quite clearly, the vast majority of people that you know, right, the vast majority of people that we see here in life aren't ready for that. And that's all right. But you are. Hmm. How about that? That's pretty cool. Because God knows there's a lot of other stuff you could be watching on YouTube right now. So when we're fearful, when we exhibit fear, remember this is a chapter here on fear and conflict, we've simply chosen wrongly. When we're afraid, we've chosen the ego as our teacher rather than the Holy Spirit. We've chosen the wrong teacher. Therefore, we're having painful experiences, fearful experiences. And there are really just two emotions, two experiences, love and fear. Everything else that we categorize and talk about and subcategorize here in the world is really a derivative of one of those two. So when we're fearful, we've chosen wrongly. We've chosen the ego instead of our inner teacher, pretty much. And 
What we're invited to do here is to change our mind, not our behavior. The focus of this course is not on the phenomenal physical world. It's on mind, changing our mind, changing our mind and allowing our inner teacher to guide us. This is what's happening when we step aside and ask our inner teacher to run the show. We give over our entire experience, everything we think, everything we say, every aspect of our lives to our inner teacher. That's setting the ego aside. True forgiveness, as it's taught in the course, is also setting the ego aside. Then we set it aside again and again and again. And changing your mind and not things in the external world is a matter of willingness. It's a matter of willingness. You've got to be willing to change your mind. You've got to be willing to invite your inner teacher to guide you. You've got to be willing to listen to your inner teacher. You've got to be willing to forgive. If you're studying this course, you've got to be willing to learn this course. How do we learn it? Well, it's not just by reading it and watching these videos. It's by doing it and putting it into practice, by actually allowing your inner teacher to guide you by actually forgiving the Son of God, everything that appears in our experience that is not sublime peace. So that's a lot of stuff, isn't it? All of it an opportunity to forgive. It's a matter of willingness and, and correction and guidance, and this course is for the level of the mind. It's appropriate at the mind level. That's where change is necessary, and that's where change can come. Remember, mind is the cause. The world that appears to be outside us is the effect. Jesus refers to it here in a healing context as the symptom. So what we see on the outside is a symptom there's a cause of all of those symptoms too, isn't there? Think about it in the context of a physical disease. If one is exhibiting physical symptoms, there has been a cause for that. Mind is the cause. The supposed external world, the phenomenal world out there, so to speak, is the effect. Healing belongs at the level of mind. That's why this course is not a course in manifesting physical objects. If that is what someone chooses to do, do it. Get that Mercedes. Make a million bucks this year. That's cool, All right? Have a hot, sexy lover and a beautiful bottle of wine or two or maybe a few cases. Just say it, <laughs> right? There's nothing wrong with that. That's just not what this course is about. It is, and this bears repeating as many times as we think of it, doesn't it? It's a course in mind training. That's where healing is needed. That's where healing occurs, the mind. And we do this under the guidance, under the support of our inner teacher. We have to be willing to change our mind. So that's the operative question now, isn't it? Are you willing? And I can't answer that for you. Only you can answer that. As always, what you're watching is an image on your screen. It is a projected image on your screen. The 
voice that urges you to forgive, to practice, that has you interested in spirituality in the first place, is your inner teacher. That's what you're hearing. So take the time to listen to your inner teacher. Give your experience over to your inner teacher and allow your inner teacher to direct your forgiveness, to direct your speech, to direct everything. This is all a giant process in relaxing and trusting because we want to control all phenomena. We want to arrange external outcomes in the world, but we're putting all of our energy in so doing in the wrong place if what we want is really the peace of God. And that is what we're all invited to seek. We're invited to want the peace of God and nothing else. So in practice, we can see why we repeat ideas over and over again. We need to hear them, obviously, as stubborn AF, adult learners. It's true. It's true. All of us. And to come back to what we were saying earlier, we're all conditioned to want these beautiful, secure, comfortable, hot, sexy lives. But a, a beautiful, secure, hot, sexy life gives way to, well, at the very least, the end of the beautiful, secure, hot, sexy life, you're not a body. True happiness doesn't come from stuff. Yes, here in the world, having a secure environment is very important. It's important to pay the bills. So no one's suggesting that you don't do that. I'm certainly not suggesting that. I like to keep the internet turned on. Clearly, right? How else am I going to reach you? So we do here in the world what's practical, but the more that you delve into this material, the more you allow your inner teacher to run the show for you and guide you, the less you'll believe in the reality of the physical world, even though you appear to be operating in it. And of course, you've got a job, you've got bills. If you have kids, you feed your kids normal stuff like that. Yeah, we live this life and to other people, we appear to be having the same thoughts. They don't know necessarily that you're questioning the foundations of everything that you've ever believed, yet that's what we're asked and invited to do. So what do we do? We keep allowing, we allow our inner teacher to run the show. It's powerful. It's powerful. And as we do it, we begin to experience the world differently. Things that may have driven us batshit crazy in the past suddenly no longer affect us the same way. When you notice that, it's very powerful. And that's how we know that this works. That's how we know that all of these teachings are true, is through our own experience. And that comes through doing it. So there's no substitute ever for that. We bring our little willingness and we give up control. Yeah. Bring our little willingness and we give up control. All right, guys, subscription button's right here. I'd love to have you join me. Thank you to all of you who have subscribed recently. I want to be uh, very, very clear that I welcome your comments and questions. So if you've got them, please feel welcome to leave them here, and I will do my best to reply as soon as possible to those. Again, subscription buttons over here. I'd love to have you join us. And thank you all for your dedication and your spiritual practice, which is the highest form of offering you can make to anyone, anytime. It's huge 
and the world needs it. So thank you for that and for accompanying me on this journey. All right, and I'll see you soon.